Hello and welcome to our second session on Reiki. And actually, we've already started the session and Tom has uh, began by placing his hands on my feet. And I have to say I felt an immediate sense of relaxation as he touched my, touched my feet. And so it is having an impact. I, I do have a problem with my digestive system, and uh, I've explained that to Tom. And he is going to continue his practice and explain uh, as, uh, as, as he conducts the, the session. He's actually going to do a, a truncated, uh, summarized version of the session for our professional. Uh, Program. So I let uh, I let Tom now explain what he is doing. The first position that I'm working with here is on Tony's feet, and what I'm doing is grounding Tony, trying to bring his mental energy more into his body rather than just up in his brain. So Tony reports that he felt uh, felt an immediate sense of relaxation. What I felt is as soon as I touched his feet, I realized that Tony was stressed. So we're tuning into each other. I pick up his stress, he pick up the energy, which is helping him to relax. So I'm going to spend about five minutes or so here at the feet, and then I'll move upwards to the knees and then to the torso and to the head. And each position bringing energy into his body, into his mind. Now normally, Tony and I would be having a little more conversation where we might be talking about his personal history, which might concern nutrition, family relationships, any old injuries, things like that might come up in a normal healing process. What I'm doing now, normally I would just sit in a meditative position, just following my own breath in and out. And by neutralizing my own thoughts, I can keep my thoughts focused on Tony, helping him to relax, helping Tony to receive the energy. Now, we don't have a full hour and a half for the video today, so I'm only going to spend a few minutes at each spot. From here, I'm going to lift my hands from the feet and change positions to come up to his knees. How are you feeling, Tony? I'm feeling very relaxed. So relaxation is a very important part of his well-being. As Western and allopathic doctors are now acknowledging for the last generation or so that stress is a major killer. And so relaxation is no small feat that if I can put my hands on a guy's feet and in 10 seconds he feels relaxed, it's a good accomplishment. Is it just belief? Is it because Tony believes in me? No, we just met a couple weeks ago. Is it because he believes in Reiki? I don't think so. I think there's something happening. Even if I can't properly explain what it is, I do know that virtually every time I put my hands on somebody's feet, they feel more relaxed. They close their eyes. Very often, they stop talking. They remain perfectly still, perfectly silent for the full hour. They feel a release. Many people, their, their arms will jerk, or their, their legs will jerk, indicating some kind of energy release. So if all we did was help people relax, fine, I'm happy with that. I'm not claiming that I'm going to cure cancer tomorrow. The truth is we already have the cure for cancer. Proper diet, proper relaxation, meditation, minima, 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 ugh, what's the word? minimalization of meat, keeping the body and the mind clean. The chances of getting cancer are down 99%. So it's not like we're looking for this great cure. The cure is already within us. Mindfulness, relaxation, compassion. 
So to follow up on Tony's question from the earlier session, when he asked about the relationship with Buddhism and Reiki, yes, compassion is a very important part of doing a Reiki healing. If I didn't care about Tony, one, I wouldn't be sitting here doing a healing for him, and I wouldn't be sharing anything with him and making suggestions. So that's part of our day-to-day -day compassion, not just when we're sitting in meditation, but in our day-to-day -day relationships with friends and colleagues and acquaintances. I'm going to move up. <clears throat> there are seven chakras on the human body, which which comes from the Indian, uh, the yogic uh, Vedic texts. The seven chakras are from the root up to the crown of the body, and these are energy centers. And they are abstract. If, if I go get the big kitchen knife and cut Tony open, you will not see this chakra. So I'm not actually going to be doing any cutting here. But in deep meditation, if you were doing a body scan, like in the Goenka meditation process, you will notice a buzzing energy at each of your chakras. So the root chakra, which is located at the base of the spine, I can't actually touch it, of course, it's in the private area, but I can intend to send the energy down into the roots. So this will help Tony with his uh, elimination, as well as any more emotional type of issues with stability, um, the sense of trust. Those are some of the, the basic issues in the first chakra. Tom, do your patients describe their experiences to you? Do they only sense relaxation or other, other feelings that they experience during the session? A lot of things, Tony. A lot of people will feel tingling. They'll describe it like 10 volts, 20 volts. Many people will feel the wave of energy as if you're pushing in and pulling out. You're pushing in, pulling out. Some people, although the minority, will report seeing colors. And this is no surprise. There are lots of people who can see colors around the human aura. But not everybody can see those things. Heat is probably the most common things people sense. Tingling, tickling. Um, all of those are various phenomena that take place, but none of them in themselves is important. What's really important is what influence we can have on the mind. If we're working on the root chakra, for example, and I start getting an image of a boy playing with an old man and a boat, I might make an inquiry, is that something from your childhood? So Reiki is not just energy in the electric sense, but it's also information. You know, I cannot control that, and I can't prove it either. But I do know that hundreds and hundreds of times I've received information about people and I ask them about it and it is spot on to where they are at in their lives. Sometimes I mention a name, a girl here was recently and we we're up working on her heart and as I was teaching I said, well just imagine in her heart, uh, Joey. Joey is giving her all this trouble. Ten minutes later we're discussing, she goes, how did you know Joey? And I go, who's Joey? He goes, he's this terrible kid in my school. He makes me crazy, but I love him. Oh, I was picking up that energy and that specific name from her heart. Coincidence? Fine. Then I have about 25 coincidences a week. That does not mean that I can put my hand here and tell you, what was Tony's very first girlfriend's name in seventh grade? I don't know. But if it were important and it were blocking his heart, that story might come up. And I would think, Tony, when you were a kid, who was your first girlfriend? Let's put him on this one. <laughs> uh, I, 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 her name was Julian. Gee, okay. Yeah. You ever think about her? 
very infrequently these okay. days. Okay, so okay. That was a couple of years ago. I have moved on. <laughs> okay. So, so this is this beloved woman Jean back from high school or whatever mm -hmm. is not a block in Jean's life. But if we were in private and we were going into a deeper conversation, maybe something from that time in his life did create a blockage, possibly in the heart, possibly in the root where I'm presently sending the energy. So the technique that I've had to do is when something pop in, pops into my mind intuitively, I have to trust it. I, ha I have no choice except to trust what happens. Do you think this is a gift uh, that some people have, Tom, that uh, they can heal or perhaps uh, sense what is going on in, in, in their patient's mind? Is it, is it something that everybody has a potential of doing, or is it just a few people who are specially gifted in that way? Anybody can do it, Tony. Mm -hmm. Anybody. Mm -hmm. The exception would be people who say, rubbish. Prove it. Mm -hmm. I need more evidence. Mm -hmm. Those people will probably not come looking for me, which means they're not even open for it. Mm -hmm. But anybody who is open to something beyond what the scientists tell us, beyond what the religions tell us, beyond what the school teachers tell us, beyond what the boss tells us, and says, I want to know more about life in this universe, anybody can do it. I would have been equally skeptical if, if you had given me Reiki in 2002. But come on. But coincidentally, things led on to my finding this energy. Is, is there an extensive training course before you become a Reiki master? To become a Reiki master takes time, yes. The criticism is that you could actually become a so-called Reiki master in a week, but you'd be a master of nothing. To actually become very, very good at it, it's going to take a couple of years of training. In the same sense that you were to do vipassana. I'm not a master of vipassana, but I practice and I practice and I practice and I practice. And I'm okay at it. My mind still wanders. I still get angry. I still have an ego. But I keep practicing. So the term master is it's tricky because to become a Tai Chi master takes 20 years. So people say, oh, Reiki, I become a master in a week. Give me my certificate. I charge lots of money. And it somewhat debases the practice. So the actual training, I sit with a person coming in for level three. It's about 18 contact hours. So we'd sit down for half a dozen times, around three hours each. Mostly just talking, doing some healings, showing some different techniques. And then they start healing doing distance healing, they would start training other people in Reiki. They'd come back again for a cup of tea or for one of our Reiki exchanges, and we would continue to reflect on their experience. It almost sounds like psychotherapy, you know, you know that well, the psychotherapy is a, is a big part of it, uh, talking or self-understanding. Is that correct? In, in my perspective, yes, but if you had another Reiki master, they might say, Tom, you talk too much, you probe too much, you analyze too much. Fine, from their perspective. On the other hand, sometimes I'll do a complete healing and not one word will be spoken. And I just have to trust my intuition that this is a talking day, this is a silent day, we'll talk later by email. That's great, Tom. I just noticed that our time is almost up. Okay. But I, I have to report, uh, observing myself, that I definitely felt relaxed and, and calmer during this session, Good. which is a truncated short mm. session of what you normally do. So thank you very much, Tom. We My really pleasure. appreciated your your information and your effort today. Okay. And, uh, and thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll be back next week. I hope to see you then.